Social Development Network, um, a Kenyan organization. And uh, my colleague, uh, Philip, um, uh, so we flew all the way to come and share with you what we do, what we are doing in Kenya in terms of open data. Um, as an organization, uh, we are in charge and we co founded a technology program in terms of strengthening citizens and civil society, but also some uh, government institutions, in, the, in strengthening their capacities uh, in the strategic use of technology um, to be able to. Um, work efficiently and effectively, but also to leverage on the use of technologies to expand their work in engaging citizens, uh, specifically as, a, as an interest um, for us as an organization. Uh, one of the things that we've learned in our work is um, it is very important to map interests if you're engaged in partnerships or if you're engaged in uh, connecting with organizations in, 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 in some work, be it in technology, be it in development, um, be it in education. Uh, in whatever field, it's always very important to my interest, so you know how to connect with them. Um, our partners, our investors, our investors above, Evos is uh, uh, a partner and an investor in our work of the year. Other foundation, uh, Google.org, actually uh, the ones we have as a seed grant uh, to, start, to start our work in Kenya in 2009. Even myself actually had to quit our work, uh, our jobs in different types, in different areas of the, of the world in 2007 because we had to take responsibility of doing something about our country. The government will not do anything about it, you have to do something about it. So that's, that's a responsibility we took. Um, why open data? That's a question we asked ourselves when we started. Why are we doing this? And when Philip came back in 2007, um, right before we did the World Social Forum in Kenya, we, we took a drive across the country. We, we, were, we wanted to find out the context of our country. And that's one other thing you need to know when you're working in, in, in technology development. Always, you have to learn the country context, or you have to learn your area, the specific area context. So that's what we did. And by traveling around the country, we learned a lot of things, including different priorities, different needs, different resources going to different areas of the country and people didn't even know. Um, double financing of processes that even governments themselves didn't know. I mean, when you talk to people, when you come to the stories and you find out the things that other people don't know. So that means there's a lot of information out there, but the question is, is it really good data? So we drew up um, a mantra uh, within ourselves that we're going to focus on improving people's lives in Kenya. But then we needed to engage everyone. We needed to engage with government. We needed to engage with civil society. We needed to engage with the church, the school, uh, funders. We needed to engage with the media. But then we had to find something that connected us all together. I mean, when we came in this morning, some of us took what, took a cab, some of us cycled here, some of us in form of connection how we came here, that's a form of connection. Um, what we do is a form of connection. How we, how we engage each other is a form of connection. And this three, for the last, this three area, three mantras for us, have sort of enabled us to achieve a lot of things, but also to learn a lot of things. That for you to be able to have an initiative that is successful, you need to have really good data. You need to have a targeted advocacy. The, same, the information that you use to engage media is not the same information you use to engage um, the parliament, or the same information you use to engage uh, our education system. And, and you have to package it right. And that campaign, the 
can definitely work because it's centered around the people. And this is very important. This is very important for us because it formulates, it formulates our principles, it formulates our processes, and this works. This is something we've tried and it works. And as we to take over, we'll be able to show you some of the things that we've done through partnerships, through these connections, through using different types of data, uh, creating strategies uh, and campaigns, initiatives of work that you have to get it right, but then you have to have clear and concise for it. Thank you. Okay, so here's a, a bunch of two quitters. <laughs> you quit my job, you quit my job. <laughs> so what does these two quitters have to tell you about Kenya and open data? Um, Kip talks about, talked about context. Uh, it's very important that uh, when we're doing our sort of guiding tour around the country, it became increasingly important to see uh, the kind of channels within which citizens are communicating and the kind, of, the kind of platforms that we could begin to build or integrate so that they could actually interface with that so that we don't actually begin to create the process. Uh, we raise that in, up there, you can actually see it's quite an interesting statistic where, and this is again data that was availed to us by CCK. So the Communication Commission of Kenya was quite open to give us this data. We sort of have uh, a data of information on mobile phone subscribers, by the join, by we have network coverage, we, have, we know who, where has a mobile phone. So it's quite, this is data that we have available. Uh, so the point is that you actually have a population between 15 and 65, which is 21 million. Um, and that for us, we understand from the communication sector that that is actually the statistically relevant group that can own a mobile phone. Why we have 24.9 million mobile subscribers. And these are active SIM cards. So you actually have everybody covered, including children and the old people. So definitely a mobile phone becomes quiet. Yeah. But doesn't everybody have three SIM cards? That's why I'm saying these are active SIM cards. There are 33 million SIM cards <laughs> in the market. So that is what is active. So this is actually very active. The thing is, of course, you're, you know, I'm better. So there's, there's sort of some value added to services that actually make this number very relevant. Uh, now all, all mobile phone companies actually have one or another mobile sort of transaction. There's now number eight of availability. So there's stuff like that that actually that number has shot up in the last six months. It wasn't that high. It was about 16 million by November. It shot up to 24 million. So simply seeing how the private sector can actually drive or competition can actually drive mobile phone access. But also I think because uh, another factor that everybody asks us, why Kenya, why innovation, why technology, why all this, is that also Kenya has a very interesting mix of, uh, you have, we have a very relatively independent press. Uh, we sort of have a quite uh, vibrant democratic uh, space in that sense, and also a very literate uh, population. So if you couple all that, then you can actually begin to see how it's easy for somebody to pick up phone and actually use it how somebody can text. Interestingly enough, people text in two languages, in Swahili and in English, which are the national languages, even though we have for two vernacular languages. So it actually shows you the sort of trends that are there. That is also data we got from the Communication Commission of Kip. Uh, so basically, uh, as Kip was mentioning, uh, it was interesting to see how to fit these two models. And we, the con we, we like to, to, to draw the context a lot. Uh, the first logic is actually what the big corporations actually use. They develop science invites, they invent a technology, the market selects, a technology applies for Microsoft Pay, Microsoft Office. Then the market selects, is it open office, is it Microsoft, is it this or that? We prefer the second one. It's a conversation. You develop something, you engage the community, bring it back to it, and it continues to be a circular conversation. And, and I like there is to think the poor are true poverty experts. I have no business in developing a tool for the poor if I don't engage them or if I don't use their knowledge to actually do that. And that really begins to inform the next slide. It's not about the wow. Mm. If it's not socially interesting, it's really technical. It doesn't get interesting until it's technologically important. And, and that is our context. There are a lot of people who don't have electricity, that's just mass size, but that's the story we have. We have issues of challenges of power, challenges of access.